All right, so I'm hoping you can all see my screen clearly. Um, Coach Mo, can you see my screen clearly? Yes, we can. All right, thank you very much. Okay, once again, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, um, for taking out your time to attend this Zoom meeting of ours. Um, like I said, this call will be for the average Joe, for the person that doesn't understand everything about crypto, or well, you probably heard of the word crypto in the past, maybe in the news or from a friend of yours. If you're wondering what exactly it is, how can you partake in this thing and how can you make money from it? Now, before we go ahead into explaining what cryptocurrency is, I also need you to understand that there are other types of currencies. We have fiat currencies and we have cryptocurrencies. Now, what is fiat? F-I-A-T. All right. So fiat currency simply means paper money. Simply means the money that you and I hold in our hands, the money you can put in your wallet, the one you can put in your pockets. Um, your legal tender in whatever country you are currently residing in. The, the money you can exchange for some good or service in your country. Now, while cryptocurrency is digital currency, it is money that exists only on the internet, you cannot hold cryptocurrency. It exists on the internet. Now, there are a lot of restrictions when it comes to the fiat currency, especially uh, regular banking sectors right now as we speak. Let's say, for instance, you would like to send some money to a few friends of yours. Let's say the first friend of yours is in Sweden. The second one is in, let's say, Finland. And the third one is in, let's say, Lithuania. And now you're trying to send them money from your home country, which is Nigeria. There are a lot of hassles and a lot of restrictions when it comes to that. First of all, you need to get to the bank to ensure that you can send funds to those countries. You need to ensure that you have the limits to send to those countries. You need to ensure the amount of funds that you're willing to send at that time. Um, you need to sign some paperwork. And obviously, the, the, the third party in this case is the bank. They know that you are about to send your money to someone. So there is no privacy in that case. Now, the difference with cryptocurrency is that there is privacy, and there's also transparency. Why? Now, every single transaction that has ever happened on the cryptocurrency space gets recorded on what we call a blockchain. B-L-O-C-K-C-H-A-I-N, the blockchain. Now, what is this blockchain? It might sound technical, but trust me, it's as easy as ABC. I always love using every day examples to pass my message across. So let's take for instance, for the people on this call that have, or that usually go to the market to buy things, you may have come across maybe a lady or a man, most likely it's a lady, um, that usually walks from one Ownership. shop to the other. What does that mean? It means Nigeria's biggest port may be getting bigger. Um, the legal I need may be someone expanded. to uh, meet themselves. They already have multiple. Um, I think let's mute everyone. Yeah, I just did. Yeah, I just did. All right, so as I was saying. Um, fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies I explained that fiat currencies are currencies that um, we can
Hello, Coach George, we can't hear you. Okay, I think he has a little problem with his network. Let's give him a little time to come back in, please. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Zoom call. Let's give Coach Josh some time to come back, please. Thank you. All right, I'm back. I think, sorry, my network oh. kicks me kicks me out. Um, right, so I'm going to share my screen now. I don't know the last thing you heard, but I'll try to. All right. You are trying to explain the blockchain, the woman in the markets. All right, great. Um, let me share my screen and then we'll continue. <clears throat> Great. Uh, Coach Moore, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. All right. So apologies for that. Uh, my network kicked me out. So I was trying to explain to you what the blockchain is. I said that in cryptocurrency, every single transaction that has ever happened or um, been completed gets recorded on what we call a blockchain. And I spelt it B L O C K C H A I N, blockchain. Can someone help me type that in the chat, please? Please type out blockchain in the chat. So, what is this blockchain? I also said that I always love using everyday examples to pass my message across. Now, for those on this call that you know probably frequent the market, um, you've probably come across a lady or a man, but most times a lady walking from one shop to the other. Um, write, taking money from them and writing down something on her notebook. Now, we call that, usually call that a job in Nigeria. But you might be asking, why is she going from one shop to the other, collecting money and writing or documenting that single act? She's writing that down for future purposes um, so that there are no discrepancies in the future as to how much was given to her and um, if any money was given to her. Now, that book she's holding is her evidence that a transaction occurred. So in terms of cryptocurrency, that notebook is what we would call the blockchain because that is where every single transaction that has ever happened on the, on the, on, in, the crypto, in crypto space gets recorded. Now, we also know, we have a saying that the blockchain is transparent but it is also anonymous. What do I mean? These are the perks. These are the advantages of cryptocurrency in general because the blockchain is transparent and it is also anonymous. Let me explain. Now, I gave an example of trying to send money from your local country, let's say you're in Nigeria, and you're trying to send money to someone in Lithuania. All the hassle when it comes to the banking sector and all that. But in terms of cryptocurrency, if you decide to send funds to that same friend, in Sweden, or the same friend in, in Lithuania, the same friend in, in Russia, whatever. With crypto, you could send how much it is that will get the person instantly, no matter how much it is. Picture trying to send over a million dollars through your Nigerian banks to um, some country overseas. <laughs> There'll be lots of red flags, a lot of pop ups, a lot of um, you know, probably invite you in, ask you what, what you do for a living, you know, what is your source of income, all that, because you're trying to send your own money to someone. But in crypto, there's no third party, there's nobody asking you what exactly you do for a living. No matter how much you're looking to send to the person, you could send a million, a billion dollars, doesn't matter, and it will get to the person as easy as a text message, that quick. That is the power of what cryptocurrency can do um, for you. So when I said that the blockchain is anonymous, but also transparent, I simply mean that the only two people that, that will know that a transaction ever happened will be between you who is sending and the person receiving. That's it. 
There is no bank, there is no account officer, there is no bank manager, there is nobody, there's nowhere to sign any paperwork for you to send your funds. The only two people that know that a transaction is about to happen in the cryptocurrency space will be between you who is sending and the person receiving. Now, that is privacy. But when I said that the blockchain is also transparent, I mean that right now as we speak, because the blockchain is an open ledger, I can go to the blockchain right now, maybe five years ago, and I could look up a transaction that happened five years ago. I would see the amount of funds that were sent. I would see the wallet address, where the funds were sent from. I would see the wallet address that received the said funds. Now that is transparency. That is open to everybody. But as of when the transaction is happening, it will be between the person who is sending and the person who is receiving. So that is the power of what cryptocurrency and the blockchain um, is doing for every one of us that is involved with it. Now, for those that don't understand that cryptocurrency is here to stay, um, these are a few stats for you to think about. Now, there are over, as of 2023, there are over 420 million crypto users and counting. So yes, every single day, you know, it keeps, um, people keep joining. People keep um, getting interested in crypto. People keep signing up. People keep um, exploring what's new in the crypto space. And these are the top countries that are involved with cryptocurrency. The first one is the USA at approximately 46 million people. Next, we have India. At approximately approximately 27 million. Next, we have Pakistan. We have Nigeria at 22 million. We have Vietnam as well at 20 million. So these are just the top countries. There are a lot more countries that are involved, but these are the top countries. So you see that crypto is here to stay. Crypto is massively being adopted. So the sooner you get involved with it, the better for you. All right, so... All this explaining all I've talked about, about cryptocurrency, about the blockchain. Um, but before I go ahead to the next thing, if you are paying attention, and I hope you were, can someone give me a brief explanation of what the blockchain is? Just in a few words, can you type what the blockchain is in the comment section? Just a few, in a few, few words, what is the blockchain? I'm looking at the chat, you know, those who are paying attention. And trust me, this is for your own good, so that you understand the, the business. That way, when, let's say you're trying to talk to somebody about the business and they ask you a question, you don't start stuttering. So, for those who are paying attention, give me a brief on this, uh, explanation of what you think a blockchain, the blockchain is. All right, so I'm waiting. Nobody? So nobody's paying attention. <laughs> okay. All right. So so it's a ledger for recording transactions. All right. Ogochi Elogo says wallet that holds uh Bitcoin. <laughs> no, that's wrong. Um blockchain is like technology that controls the crypto transaction. Uh through encryption. Someone says it is a ledger where all transactions are being recorded. Fantastic. That is the best and um, most basic answer that we should all understand. It's fine if you understand it your own way, as long as you understand it. Next person says, um, transparent and anonymous. That's also fantastic. A ledger for recording all transactions, correct. Uh, blockchain is a decentralized and immutable digital ledger. This one is this one is part of us. <laughs> all right, so it is a transparent ledger, uh, a record, a record of all transactions. Good, I'm happy. A decentralized ledger, fantastic. In any way you can understand it, in any words you can put it to to understand it yourself, please go ahead. As long as you are um, memorizing the correct thing, just know that the blockchain is where all transactions that happen on cryptocurrency space get recorded. All right, that is the most basic, 
most um, layman answer that you can just grab away from this presentation. All right, moving ahead. Um, good. Now, for you to get involved with cryptocurrency, um, for you to receive or send or keep any cryptocurrency, you need to be involved with what we call a cryptocurrency exchange. Now, what is an exchange? An exchange is a platform where you can buy, where you can sell, where you can receive, where you can store cryptocurrencies. Now, examples of um, exchanges are, you've probably heard of a few of them. We have Kraken, we have Coinbase, we have Binance, we have P um, Bybit, we have KuCoin, um, we have OKX. There are so many cryptocurrency exchanges out there for you to take advantage of. So yes, when you, when you uh, for you to receive any crypto, you need to receive it with what we call a cryptocurrency wallet. So basically, um, one of our leaders likes calling it your digital bank account. That is where you can receive the funds that somebody is sending to you. And also for you to send any cryptocurrency to someone, you also need to send it from your own crypto wallet. All right, moving on. Now, generally in finance, we have what we call trading pairs. Now, just like the word implies, pair, meaning two. Um, so, and you need to understand that trading pair isn't just particular to cryptocurrency. I'll explain what I mean. Let's take, for instance, um, now, before I go ahead, I would like somebody to give me or tell me the difference between what fiat currency is and what cryptocurrency is. That was one of the first things I said when we started this presentation. So if you are paying attention, it should be easy. Nothing technical, no long sentences, just in the most basic form, give me your own understanding of what fiat currency is and what cryptocurrency is. All right, so I've been looking in the chat to ensure that you are typing. All right. All right, so Adekunle says fiat currency is paper money. Okay, is it just Adekunle that was paying attention? So I said two of them, like what is the difference? What is, what is fiat currency and what is uh, cryptocurrency? All right, so someone says hard currency, digital currency. Okay, that, yes, that's correct. Fiat currency being the hard currency, what is the currency being uh, crypto? Next, uh, Chica says fiat is paper money, while cryptocurrency is digital money. Good. Next person said you can hold fiat, but you can't hold crypto. Hmm. It depends on the kind of hold you're talking about. If you mean physically, then you're correct. But if you mean in terms of keeping, then you're wrong. All right. Um, fiat is for everyday physical transactions, while crypto is purely digital. Next says... Fiat currency is the physical money in your hands, while crypto is an online currency which you cannot see. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're trying to say you cannot touch. All right, so fiat is centralized, while crypto is decentralized, correct. Like I said, in any way you can understand all I'm saying, as long as you're understanding the correct thing, please go right ahead. Just know that fiat currency is literally paper money, your legal tender in whatever country you're in, the money you can put in your wallets, in your pockets, um, as long as you can hold it with your hands, that is fiat, paper money. Well, cryptocurrency is digital currency. It exists on the internet. It can be sent over the internet. It cannot be held with your hands. Awesome. So moving on. Um, all right, moving on. I was trying to explain to you what trading pairs are. Now, let's take, for instance, um, a friend of yours, this is an example I always like using. A friend of yours returns from uh, the UK. And now that friend of yours hands you a hundred pound um, bill, hundred pounds. Um, and, then you, and then you then decide to go change it the next day. So what do you do? You go to a brewery to change or you go to an aboke, you're like, ah, aboke, aboke. How much is pounds to Naira today? How much is my pounds worth in Naira? 
basically trading pairs simply means that you like to know what the value of what one currency is to another you like to know what what one currency is to another so when you walk up to the bureau to change or to the book and you're like i beg how much is dollar or oh, sorry pounds to naira today you simply want to know what the value of the pounds you're holding is in your legal fiat currency. All right. So let's say um, now in that case, the trading pair for that question you just asked the brewery to change or the aboki man that's selling you the selling the money. The trading pair in that instance would be GBP slash N G N. I will say it again. Remember, a friend of yours came back from the UK, handed you a hundred pounds bill just for fun, tells you to take it, thank you for everything you've done for him or her, whatever. And you decide to go change that money to your Nigerian currency. The next morning you go to Buri Change or you go to uh, Anaboki and you're like, please, how much is pounds to Naira today? The trading pair in that instance would be, you would like to know what the pounds you are holding would be in Naira. Therefore, the trading pair would be GBP slash NGN. Now, what does GBP stand for? GBP stands for Great British Pounds slash NGN, which is the Nigerian Naira. All right? So that's an example. So let's say, a friend of yours came back from Japan and handed you their notes. If you had gone, please pay attention. I would, I would like to ask, ask a question now so that I'm sure you're paying attention. I just gave you an instance of someone that came back from the UK and you were handed pounds. So let's say a friend of yours came back from Japan and handed you over the currency of Japan. And now you decide to go change that um, the Japanese money to Naira, can you please type in the chat what the trading pair would be? Using the example I've given, what would the trading pair be for what I just explained to you? For someone who came back from China. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of answers. One, one slash um, NGN. I'm seeing yen slash NGN. I'm seeing JOY. I'm, I'm hoping you're trying to type uh, JPY. I'm seeing JPY slash NGN and so on. Fantastic. I'm happy that a lot of us have an idea. Uh, someone said CNY. Is that, is that Japanese, Chinese yen? Uh, all right. So the correct thing here is the JPY slash NGN. All right, so I'm happy that a lot of us are catching on um, to what we are talking about. So the, the trading pair in that particular instance would be JPY slash NGN, which is Japanese yen slash NGN. All right, all these examples I just gave you now are all examples of fiat currencies. If you remember, fiat is paper money. Um, the pounds, paper money. Japanese yen, paper money. Now, trading pairs also exist on or in cryptocurrency as well. For example, here you can see we have BTC slash USDT. This is not fiat. This is not paper money because BTC stands for Bitcoin slash USDT. USDT simply means United States dollar tether. I will say it again. Can someone please help me type it in the chat? United States dollar tether. Tether, T-E-T-H-E-R. What is tether? When you try to bind two things together, two things that are bound together, that are held together. So, sorry, excuse me. 
BTC slash USDT. Now, what is USDT? Like I said, it is United States Dollar Tether. Can someone please help me type it in the chat? Thank you. Now, USDT is simply the cryptocurrency equivalent of a regular dollar. I will say it again. USDT is simply the cryptocurrency equivalent of a regular fiat dollar. One more time. USDT is the cryptocurrency equivalent of a regular fiat dollar. All right? I'm hoping that's clear. So yes, one dollar, one paper money dollar is equal to one USDT. One USDT is equal to one paper money dollar. All right? And obviously by paper money, I mean fiat. Um, so yes, one USDT is equal to one regular dollar. So in this instance here that says BTC slash USDT, this simply means that you'd like to know what the value of the Bitcoin you are holding is in USDT. You simply want to know what the value of the Bitcoin you are holding is in USDT. All right. So I'm hoping everybody's following because trust me, all these things I'm talking about from the fiat, to the crypto to blockchain, everything all accumulates to why we are getting involved with, with Royal Q. All right. Because you need to understand these things if you want to build your business properly and understand how we are even making this money in Royal Q. All right. Moving on. I'm moving on to some basic investment strategies when it comes to cryptocurrency. Um, how can you make more cryptocurrency? How can you become wealthy? Or how can you make you know some extra income from um, cryptocurrency? The first way is by what we call hodling. H-O-D-L-I-N-G. But it's a play on words, on holding. H-O-L. D-I-N-G, which is like physically holding on to something, all right? So in this sense, huddling is simply the act of holding on to, in this case, a coin for a long time. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an everyday example. It's an example I always use every week. Now, let's take, for instance, a few years ago, let's say 15 years ago, um, maybe in your office, somebody told you there's a piece of land that somebody's selling for 800,000 there. But it's, you know, it's maybe it's in a very remote area. Uh, there is no, no much development there. But in your heart of hearts, you just want to, you don't want to waste that money. You just want to use that money to buy some property. And this is just the perfect time. So now you purchase that piece of land for 800,000 there. You told yourself that no matter what happens, you are not going to sell that land for the longest. You're not going to sell it until the 2024. That is your long-term plan. That is your long-term investment. Now, let's say months down the line after you purchased the land, somebody came to you with a juicy offer and they tell you, we would like to buy this piece of land from you for 2.5 million naira. Now, that seems like a lot. That seems like you know good profit. Moreover, you bought it for 800,000 and somebody's here offering you 2.5 million for that same piece of land. But you decide to know what? Decline the offer because you have, um, you feel within your gut, you understand, you can see that in the future, this piece of land will be worth way more than it is right now. So let's say, regardless of all the temptation, regardless of all the offers that have come from people, you decide to hold on to that piece of land until now. 2024, 15 years later. And now um, there's lots of development there. Houses have been built, estates have been carved out, you know, civilization is now surrounding that piece of land. And now you try to go and find out how much that piece of land is. And they tell you that piece of land is now worth over 20 million naira. So now you see that you took the right choice. You made the right sacrifice. You held on to that piece of land. Regardless of whatever it is that happened, you decided to hold on to that piece of land. And now you are reaping the benefits with massive gains. That is the same thing I'm talking about here. Because obviously in this case, the piece of land we're talking about 
is a cryptocurrency. Now, those that made a lot of money with Bitcoin when it came out. Let's take for instance, when Bitcoin came out, Bitcoin was less than a dollar. When Bitcoin was created, it was less, it was in cents. So let's do simple math here. And please help me calculate in the chat and please type. Let's say one Bitcoin was less than $1. Let's say as of when you wanted to buy years ago, one Bitcoin was 10 cents. All right. So now you told yourself, you know what? I don't believe this. I don't really believe this Bitcoin thing, but you know, let me just buy some and see where it gets me. That is what a lot of people did. I'm sure a lot of people didn't believe truly in what they were investing in. They just gambled basically that I hope this eventually gets to something. So let's just say when you started to purchase Bitcoin, it was less than a dollar. It was 10 cents for one Bitcoin. And now you decided to buy 10 pieces of Bitcoin at 10 cents each. How much would you have spent to purchase those 10 pieces? Can you please tell me in the chat? One Bitcoin for 10 cents, and you decided to purchase 10 pieces of Bitcoin. How much would you have spent to purchase those 10 Bitcoins? All right. So um, Sweet Nana says, second. All right, Sweet Nana says $1 for all 10 units. So is 100 cents. Um, HOV says $1. Edwin says one dollar. Someone says twenty cents. No, I said one bit, one Bitcoin, ten cents, and you decided to purchase ten pieces of Bitcoin. So how much would that be? So everyone says one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. Fantastic. So yes, you would have spent a whooping sum. <laughs> You'd have invested a whooping sum of one dollar to purchase to purchase ten pieces of Bitcoin back then. Now. Can someone tell me how much one Bitcoin is right now as we speak? Right now as we speak, how much is one Bitcoin? Because let's just say that back then you purchased the 10 pieces of Bitcoin and maybe you forgot about it because, you know, not a lot of people are talking about it. So you purchased it, you kept it in your wallet, and to be honest, you just forgot about it. You know, then years down the line, now everybody's talking about Bitcoin. Everybody's talking about um, bull run. Everybody's talking about, oh, internet money, digital wealth. And then you remember, I, th I think I bought something like this a few years ago. It was called Bitcoin. And you spent $1 to purchase it. You purchased 10 pieces of those Bitcoin. Can someone tell me how much one Bitcoin is right now as we speak? All right, someone says um, about $60,000. That is what one Bitcoin is right now as we speak. One Bitcoin, 60, approximately 60,000, all right? So let's say you, you know, forgot about those 10 pieces of Bitcoin you bought for $1 years ago, and you logged on to that particular wallet right now, and you opened that wallet. How much would the person see as soon as that wallet gets opened as we speak? Remember, you purchased 10 pieces back then and all you spent was $1. How much would the person see in their wallets as soon as they open it right now as we speak? Please type in the chat. All right, so Lovett says $600,000. Hmm. Anybody else? 600K. 600K. So... And this is just for 10 pieces of Bitcoin. I, I'm sure nobody bought just $1 worth of Bitcoin as of then, you know. So picture those that, you know, just threw in like $100 or those that threw in even $50 just to buy Bitcoins. You know that right now to be multi-millionaires. So the potential and the, the ability to hold on to coins, the ability to huddle, is also a massive way of making money in crypto because there are so many coins out there that you can take advantage of. 
you might be saying now that oh bitcoin has already gone you know it's it's over 60,000 how can i get involved with it but i'll be honest with you bitcoin this is not financial advice but bitcoin will rise even further than it is right now this is just the start of what bitcoin can do you know so but we'll be saying that you know it's already too expensive how how can i even catch up to what bitcoin is doing now there are so many coins that are popping up right now as we speak. There are so many coins with proper good use cases that you can get involved with, that you can buy into. And then when you hold on to them, obviously, in the future, when the, when the bull run gets here, you make good money. So those that took the chance, those that took the, the risk to buy Bitcoin back then when it was nothing, are the ones reaping all the benefits right now. Now, that is for hodling, because hodling is for long-term. Hodlers look for long-term gains. They are not looking for short-term gains. They are looking to make proper, massive gains, regardless of how long it will take them to make that. Now, the next way you can make money in crypto in crypto, cryptocurrency is by day trading. And this day trading is done by who? Day traders. Now, who is a day trader? Day traders are those that have extensive knowledge and understanding of the market. They know when to trade, when not to trade, when to get involved into the market, and when not to as well. Um, but for you to become a day trader, you need proper knowledge. You need um, education. You need to practice and practice and practice. But day traders are not looking for long-term gains. They are looking for the shortest time possible to make gains and they leave. They're looking for quick profits and then they leave the market. So that's why they need to analyze. They need to know when to get in and when to get out of the market. So please don't get confused. You must not be one or the other. It's not like as long as, as soon as you become a hodler, you can't be a day trader. Or as soon as you're a day trader, you can't be a hodler. No, you can be both. Because there are so many coins out there that you can take advantage of. There are coins out there that, you know, when you look at them, you can see the long-term potential in them. Then you can buy into them and hope for the best. Next to, there are also coins that you can see short-term potentials. You can see how often they pump or how often they dump. And then you can decide to use those ones for your daily trading. So I hope that is clear. All right, so while we're here, we're here today to talk about Royal Q. Now you understand why everything I've been talking about prior to this particular slide was important. From fiat to crypto to trading pairs, you know, to um, blockchain, everything that I've, all I've talked about throughout this presentation culminates to why we are here today. Now, Royal Q. Before I go into what Royal Q is, I'm hoping a lot of us here have heard of the word of the words um, artificial intelligence, which is AI. All right. Um, AI simply is here to make your life easier. Regardless of whatever it is that you do, whatever nine to five work or job that you do, <laughs> excuse me. Even if you're a businessman or woman, there is an AI tool out there to help you in whatever it is you're doing. Let's take, for instance, people that do um, digital marketing. There are AI tools that can help you send out you know, emails quickly. There are AI tools that can help you monitor those that are trying to, re those that reply, that send you messages, instant replies. Um, for those that do photography, there are AI tools now that can help quickly help you clean up pictures. You don't have to spend hours on end, you know, cleaning up yourself, editing, all that. There are AI tools that can help you do that. Um, there are um, those that do feed videography. Um, let's say someone is trying to shoot a video right now, and they want to shoot it in, let's say in the in in Chicago, in the U.S. Now they want to shoot a video of a man walking down the street, um, uh, holding an umbrella, um, ho and also holding a cup of coffee. If he wants to shoot that video, what would he need to do? He would need to travel to the U.S. He will need to audition for models. He will need to um, pick out a costume. 
he would need to get the props, the clothing. He would need to take permission to shoot in that particular location. He would need to set up his cameras. He need to set everything up for him to get that one shot. You can see what I mean by the logistics involved, the money, the time, everything that would, would involve to get that particular shot. But I'd like to let, let you know that right now, as we speak, there are AI tools that all you will need to know to get that same scene would be to just type in words. Please generate a man in the streets of Chicago walking, holding an umbrella and a cup of coffee. And instantly, in seconds, that video will be generated for you. Instantly. So that is the power of what AI can do. And how would that help that man? It would help him because right now, uh, when that happens, he can produce more content. He can have more clients. He no longer delays on one work or one job. As he's making more, as he's getting more clients, he's producing faster, he's making more money. So that is the power of what AI can do for you. So yes, AI tools are here to make your life easier, regardless of whatever it is that you're doing. Right now in the US, Tesla, the company, you have self-driving cars. All you need to do is get, get into the car and it takes you to your destination or to your location. In China, we have um, self-driving taxi companies. Not Uber, self-driving taxi companies, no driver. On your phone, you just book where you're going to. You stand at the designated spot. The car drives up to where you are. You get in, into the car and it takes you to your destination. No driver. All through the power of artificial intelligence. So these are just pointers to show you that AI is here to help make our lives easier. Yes, there might be you know, disadvantages, but most of the time, the advantages for AI is massive. Now, if you have AI tools that can help you um, produce more content, AI tools that can help you make more pictures, AI tools that can help you make more videos, why not have AI tools that can help you trade even better? AI tools that can help you monitor the market, AI tools that can help you sell and buy while you go about your day, while you go about your every, your nine to five, whatever it is that you do during the day. And there's an AI tool there working for you, selling, buying, closing trades, opening, seamlessly, without you having to be there to monitor those trades. And that is where Royal Q comes into play. Because this Royal Q is an AI trading tool, AI trading bot that can help you do all those things, help you monitor the market, help you trade, help you close trades, help you open trades while you are doing other things. It is here to be your personal worker. It is here to help you make money while you get busy with other things. Now, this is a graphical representation of what I've been talking about. On the left, we have a day trader. Now, don't get me wrong. This image doesn't mean that day traders don't make money. No. It simply means that, as a matter of fact, that day, day traders are making lots of money. But this just simply means that there's, there's only so much a human being can do at a time. There's only so much trades a human being can monitor at a time. A human cannot monitor over 50 trades, 100 trades at a go. You cannot keep flipping from one screen to the other to monitor which coin to buy and which one not to buy. When can I sell off? When should I not enter? It's a hassle. It's, it's almost, almost impossible for humans to monitor those number of trades. But on the right, an AI tool, an AI bot, can monitor over 50 to 100 trades with ease without you having to do anything. It would close, it would trade, it would sell off, it would buy. Whatever instructions given to your Royal Q bot will get executed when the time is right. As a human or as a day trader, you have emotions involved as well. Maybe, oh, I have my bills to pay in two days, so therefore I need to trade harder. Or I have my um, school fees to pay in by next week, so I need to trade even harder. Or my kids' fees are almost due, so I need to trade even harder. That is the recipe for disaster. Because by the time you keep getting involved with you getting your emotions involved with your trading, nine times out of ten, you will lose money. And that's the fact. But an AI tool doesn't care what is going on in your life. It doesn't care if you have bills to pay. 
It doesn't care if your rent is almost due. The AI tool performs when it's supposed to perform, and that's that. It executes, it trades, and it gives results. As simple as that. All right, so how does the real Q bot really work? Now, we have over here an image that shows on the on the left the real Q bot. We have in the middle, we have API, and we also have on the right Binance. Now, in this case, your Binance would be your digital bank account. This is where you keep your money. Now, before I go ahead, I need you to understand that if you don't take anything away from this call today, just take this away. In Royal Q, you do not send your money to anyone. Please type that in the chat. I would like to see 10 people type that in the chat. In Royal Q, you do not send your money to anyone. I would like to see 10 people type that in the chat. In Royal Q, you do not send your money to anyone. I want to see 10 people type that in the chat before I continue. In Royal Q, you do not send your money to anyone. This is it. In Royal Q, fantastic. This is just one. And see 10, 10, 10 people. 10 people. One. <laughs> 10 people. One, I'm seeing, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, ten, good. In Royal Q, you do not give or send your money to anyone. If you don't take anything away from all I've said today, all the English or dra grammar I've been speaking today, take this one away. In Royal Q, you do not send your funds to anyone. Now, as I was explaining, on the left, you have the Royal Q bot. In the middle, you have the API. And on the right, you have your Binance, which in this case is your cryptocurrency, or your digital bank account. This is where you keep your money. This is where you keep your capital. Now, here's the juicy part. This, because this is where you keep your capital, nobody can access the money in there except you. I will say it again. Nobody can access the money in your digital bank account except you because you have all the passwords, you have all the 2FA, you have all the um, everything that pertains to security when it comes to that account is in your hands. Nobody can withdraw any funds from that account except you. Now, what does this API do? The API simply binds your Royal Q bot to your digital bank account, which in this case, an example is the Binance. Why? Because the API gives the Royal Q bot a sneak peek into the amount of funds you have in there, thereby letting it use the funds you have in there to make more for you. So basically it's giving the Royal Q bot permission to trade your funds for you and also return the proceeds and keep them still in your digital bank account. Simply put, your money is in your possession. The, the uh, Royal Q bot helps you trade it and your profits also remain in your possession. That is fantastic. That is, that's unheard of. I'm sure a lot of us here in this room right now have been, have been a part of some business or businesses that have promised you a lot of things. They've told you, you know what? Send us your money. We will trade for you and we'll send you percentages. Or we made we we made this percentage today, or we'll probably pay you in one week, you know, um, or we pay per week, stuff like that. If you if you have ever experienced something like this, if you've ever had a business that obviously they eventually went went bad or went wrong, if you have ever had this kind of experience where you had to send money to a company or whatever, and they told you or promised that they will send you funds daily or weekly, and obviously they eventually disappeared. Please type yes in the chat. Let me know those that have felt our pain. <laughs> okay, so I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, sweet, sweet Naya, uh, her yes is in all capital. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So yes, I'm happy. Not happy, um, you know, <laughs> I'm sure it was a distasteful experience for you, but I'm just glad that we share the same experience. 
So that's why when things like this pop up, when a business like Royal Q pops up, you grab onto it because it is unheard of where you have possession of your own capital and you can also, your, your profits are also in your own possession. It's not in anybody's uh, private bank account to now send to you later. No. So that is the power of what the Royal Q bot can do for you. Um, the API merges it and then it trades for you and then keeps your profits still in your own uh, bank account. Now, you might be asking me that, so what is what is in it for the Royal Q system or the, the team behind the Royal Q? Are they just willing to help you trade and make money for you and that's it? Nothing in for them? I'll get to that as we go on. All right, so how does Royal Q bot help you make money? Um, the type of trading that the Royal Q bot does is what we call the spot trading. Um, now, what is spot trading? It might sound technical, but trust me, it is as easy as ABC. Remember, this call is for the layman, basic, most basic explanations, you know, for um, easy understanding. So spot trading simply means, okay, before I go ahead, every single man or woman that has ever started a business, let me ask this question to those, to those that are listening. Type in the chat. What is that one thing that every businessman or woman, you know, the first thing on their, the main thing on their mind when they are starting a business, what is it that they want to make? The main thing on their mind for a businessman or woman, what is the main thing on their mind when they decide, you know what, I want to start a business. I want to open a shop. I want to start selling this. I want to do this. As long as it's business, what is that main thing? That they want to make good so love it says profit fantastic that's the word i'm looking for um chica says profit see box says profit 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 mm. good exactly profit or to make more money <laughs> yes yes so the main thing for every businessman or woman that has ever started the business is to make profit. Nobody ever starts a business to lose money. I haven't, well, I haven't come across the person, but nobody ever starts a business because they want to lose money. So what is spot trading? Spot trading is simply buying low and selling high. And what is that? That's making profit. When you decide to buy low and sell high, you decide to buy a product for a lesser price and sell higher to a customer. The difference is your profit. So this is the type of trading that Royal Q bot does for you. And why is this important? Because with spot trading, you buy low, you sell high. There are no margin or no futures trading in this one. There are no emotions and no losses. Yes, in spot trading, there are no losses. Let's take, for instance, let's say you, right now, okay, right now, you know, the first scarcity is getting crazy let's say three months ago you decided you wanted to buy fuel at let's say 500 um shoot uh 400 naira 400 naira per liter that was your plan you bought the you bought 400 naira per liter uh fuel you decided you're going to wait until the price of fuel gets to 700 that's your plan but Something now happens in the market, and now the price of fuel starts dropping. From 400, it drops to 350. It drops to 320. It drops to 250. drops to 200. Yeah, for everybody else, it's good. For the consumers, it's good. But for the businessman, it is not. Because he has, he, you know, to him, he's losing money. But as long as you still have possession of that keg of fuel that you have purchased, and it's still in your possession, in your house, you haven't lost money. You have only lost the value of that keg of fuel that you are holding on to. Why? Because the market always fluctuates. The market does only two things. The market goes down and it goes up. It goes down and it goes up. It keeps fluctuating regardless, um, no matter what happens. There is no constant uptrend in the market. 
there is no constant decline in the market. There is always some level of fluctuation when it comes to the market. So the keg of fuel that you have in your house, even though the price has dropped from the first time you bought at 400 naira per liter, and now it's currently sitting pretty at 200 naira per liter, you still haven't lost money because you still have possession of that keg of fuel in your house. The only thing is that that keg of fuel you are holding in your house has lost value. And let's say the market now recovers, goes back up eventually, no matter how long it takes, to the 400 naira per liter that you bought that first. Now you see that you really didn't lose money. The only thing that you lost throughout that entire thing was just time. The time it took you, the patience it took you to wait, to wait it out, to wait out the downtime, to wait out the, the decline in the market and eventually the um, uptrend of the market. Now, holding on to that fuel and eventually it gets back to 400, a little more time and it gets to your target, um, your profit target of 700 now. You sell and you make your profit. Now, during that time when the price of fuel was 200 naira, we would say that you are currently in a floating loss. Can someone please help me type floating loss in the chat? During that downtime, when you bought the fuel for 400 naira and eventually start, started declining to 300 to 200, we would say that you were in a floating loss. All right, it is not an actual loss. Now, when can we say that you are in an actual loss? An actual loss would be as of then when the price was down, you then decided, ah, I don't think I can wait anymore for this market to recover. This world is just sitting here doing nothing. I might just let me just sell it off and you know cut my losses and just go. As soon as you decide to sell off during that time, during that region. That is when we would say that now you had an actual loss. But as long as you decide to hold on to it for as long as it takes for the market to recover, we would say that as of then, you are in a floating loss. So I'm hoping that it's very clear for every one of us. And obviously, all the examples I just gave from the keg of fuel to the pricing, in this case, obviously, the keg of fuel will be cryptocurrency in this case. Because as long as you hold on to those coins, the market will, will fluctuate. As long as you don't sell at a loss, you can't lose money. If you have patience, the market will recover, and then you can make your profits with ease. All right, I wonder where we can make money um, with the Royal Q bot is by what we call the Martingale strategy. Now, what is this Martingale strategy? Also called dollar cost averaging dollar cost averaging what is this let's take for instance we have um mr john now mr john decides to purchase some cryptocurrencies for um 400 his plan is that after purchasing 40 dollars he's going to sell off when the coin <laughs> becomes or appreciates to 700 dollars that is his plan. But something happens in the market. Now the market starts declining. From his $400, now the coin that he bought is now worth $390. It's now worth $350. Drops a little further to $320, to $300, to $250, to $200. Now, Mr. John is panicking. He's wondering, what should he do? Should he sell off? Should he wait? The dilemma. What can he do now? But thankfully, Mr. John decides, you know what, I'm just going to hold on to this, forget about it, because he understands that the market will eventually recover. Now, Mr. John, does, Mr. John decides to wait it out, no matter how long it took, weeks, days, months, whatever. And then the market now eventually recovers back to his $400 as of when he bought, and eventually to his profit target of $700. Now, the only thing that Mr. John lost was time. He didn't lose money, just time. Now, let's take for instance, there's a different person. The person, or let's request call him Mr. Mr. Paul. Now, Mr. Paul decides to do the same thing that Mr. John has done, but with a little difference. He decides to do the same thing. 
buy a cryptocurrency for four hundred dollars. Um, his plan is that when he gets to seven hundred, he's going to sell off in profit. But same thing happens to him as well. The market starts declining. From 400, it drops to 320, to 300, to 250, to 200. But the difference is that Mr. Paul understood that this drop in prices was an opportunity for him. Remember, the only thing Mr. John did was wait. He waited for the market to go down and come back up. But Mr. Paul decided to take advantage of this dip in the market. So for every time the market or the value of that coin he was holding was dropping, he kept buying more. So when it dropped from 400 to 390, he bought more. When it dropped from 390 to 350, he bought more. From 350 to 300, he kept buying more and so on, even down to when it got to 200. Now, some people might say Mr. Paul is dumb. Mr. Paul... Ah, you're losing money, you're still putting money in, cut your losses and let this thing be. Some people might say that, but Mr. Paul is not actually dumb because he understood that the market does only two things. The market only goes down and it goes up. The market keeps fluctuating regardless of whatever it is. Now, when the market starts recovering, even before it gets back to his $400, he would have way more money that Mr. John did. Because remember, all Mr. John did was just wait for the market to go down, the value of his coin to go down, and eventually come up. But Mr. Paul decided to take advantage of that opportunity and purchase more coins every time he kept dipping. Because that way, at a, at a lesser price, he would get more, more, uh, more coins at a cheaper price. So for every time the market went down, he just kept buying more because he understood that when this coin starts rebounding, when this coin starts getting back to the top, he's going to make way more money. And of course, he will. And he did. Because by the time he got back to his $400 initial price, it was no longer $400. It would be way more than what Mr. John had. And obviously, if he still holds on to get it to the previous target price of $700, he would, wake, he would make way more than $700. So that is the potential and the power of what the Matigil strategy can do for you. As you can see over here, for every time the market dropped, he just kept buying more. That is the power of what the Matigil strategy can do for you. And this is how Royal Q Bot helps you make money. Because every time the market drops, there are settings you can give your Royal Q Bot to keep buying for you every time the market drops. And obviously, when, you, when the market starts recovering, you will make way more money. All right, how to operate the Royal Q bots to become profitable? I've talked about different strategies. The next one we're going to talk about is the cycle strategy. Now, what is the cycle strategy? Just like the name implies, cycle, something that is continuous, something that is revolving, a continuous process. Now, let's take, for instance, um, you tell your, you instruct your real key bot, please purchase this coin for me at $200. Now, that is the first instruction. The second instruction is that you're telling your bot, please, when this bot, when this coin gets to, let's say, 500, please sell off in profit for me. Now, after selling in profit for me, and I've made profit, if the market starts coming back down, if the market starts depreciating, please rebuy into this market. After rebuying, if the market now goes back up, if the market starts appreciating, again, please sell. Basically, the cycle strategy is that you are telling your rookie bot to keep this action going continuously. If the market goes down, buy. If it goes up, sell. If it comes back down, buy. If it goes up, sell. Continuously. And you don't have to be there to monitor these processes. It works seamlessly as long as you have programmed the Royal Keyboard to get it done. It will keep making more money for you as the market keeps fluctuating. 
That is the power of the cycle strategy. Now, this action will keep going on until you come online by yourself and decide to stop it from continuing. The next um, strategy that we have is what we call the one-shot strategy. And what is this? Just like the name implies, it simply means a one-time trade. It simply means a one-time instruction given to your Royal Q bot. You are simply telling your Royal Q bot, for example, please purchase this coin for me at $200. When it gets to $500, please sell in profit for me. Now, the other instruction is also that if this market starts coming back down, please do not repurchase into this coin. Remember, one shot. It's a one instruction trade. It's a one-time trade you have. One instruct, one time trade that you have told your Rocky bot to execute. So I'm hoping that is clear for what cycle strategy is and for what one shot strategy is. Now, the monthly profits that you can make from these strategies are as follows. The first one, cycle strategy at approximately 5 to 30% per month is what you can make on that. And the next one is the one shot strategy from 5 to 100% can be made from that within a month. So the choice is yours. You can do both of them. You can choose to strict stick to one, but you can do both. Because again, remember, there are so many coins that you can trade. There are so many coins that you can make them the most of to help make more profits for you. All right, what kind of income do you make in Royal Q? The first one is the trading income. Trading income simply is the funds that you make when your Royal Q bot sells successfully or closes a trade for you successfully. That is your trading income. Next is the team trading profits, which is the profits that you make when people that you have shown this business to start making profits as well from their trades. Next is the affiliate income, which is the income you make when you decide to, like I always say, or I love to say, when you decide to bless people with this opportunity, when you show them what is working for you and they start trading as well, and they start making money as well, you also make money from that. At the top right here, we have what we call the fuel fee. Now, a few slides ago, I asked, or I said that you might be wondering, this Royal Q team, or not us, like the people that, created the app and the, the, the de developers, how did they make their money? Did they just create the bot so that everybody can use it for free and make money without them having to make anything? No, I told you earlier, every businessman or woman that has ever started a business started that business because they wanted to make profits. Nobody starts a business because they want to lose money. So that is where the 20% comes into play because for every time that you make profits, using the Royal Q bot and it sells successfully for you. Every time you make profit, 20% of that goes to Royal Q. All right. So regardless of whatever, regardless of whatever profit you make, 20% of that goes to Royal Q. Let's say you make hundred dollars in profits. 20% of that goes to Royal Q. Let's say you make $10 in profits. 20% of that also goes to Royal Q. All right, so how do you get started with this business? Um, how do you get started? You will need a minimum of 240 USDT. Remember, I explained what USDT is um, a few slides ago. And this business is solely a crypto business. So that is why you're not just using the regular dollar to get started. You need to purchase USDT to get started. So you will need a minimum of 240 USDT to get started. Now, how is that split? 120 USDT of that is your subscription fee yearly. That gives you access to use the Royal Cube Bot to help make more money. The 120 USDT is the fee that gives you access to use the Royal Cube Bot to help you make more money. Next, 20 USDT as, uh, for the fuel fee. I told you that every time you make, um, you close a trade successfully, 20% of that would get um, deducted 
from this 20 USDT you're seeing over here. So that is how they make their own money. Every time you make your profit, 20% of that will be deducted from this 20 USDT that you are seeing over here. Finally, you will need a minimum of $100 USDT in your digital bank account, your Binance or whatever exchange it is that um, pairs with your Royal Q. Uh, but remember, this one is your capital. This is the money you, you, you will use to trade. So you will need a minimum of $100 in your digital bank account. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have more. We have people trading with way more. We're trading with $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 people that are trading right now in the Royal Q um, bots. But the minimum is $100 for you to get started as your capital. <clears throat> and obviously, you know that the more capital you have in there, obviously, the more money you will make. But um, we have an amazing... Amazing... is when you are setting up your real key bot or you, when you are setting up a trade. But as soon as you set up a trade, you give your real key bot instructions on what coins to buy, when to sell and all that. As soon as you press start or you click on comments, as soon as that happens, you can turn off your data. You can walk into a place that has no internet access. You can go to a remote area that has no cell towers or anything that pertains to um, connectivity. And the Royal QBot will still um, execute the trades when it is supposed to execute. And whenever you come back, you will see your profits there sitting and waiting for you with ease. Next, 0% supervision. Um, capital and profit is 100% in your custody. As I explained so many times, your funds are in your control. Both your capital, both your profits, everything will sit in your own cryptocurrency wallet. Your kids, your family can inherit this business. We have a saying that in the future, we'll no longer be passing on land documents and all that to our loved ones. We'll be passing on our uh, passwords, our private keys, so that our loved ones can access all our digital wealth. Next, no loss of funds and no third party. Next, no skills required until or unless you decide to become a day trader. I told you that day traders are those that take and understand the market, that have extensive knowledge and understanding of the market that need to study. Um, they need to know when to get in, get into a trade, when not to, and all that takes skill and um, months, years of work and learning, constant learning for you to become better. Finally, no CAC degree or certificate is required to be a part of this business. What do you stand to gain from the RQTMI team when you get started? Um, number one, you get access to the RQTMI premium group to earn more. Um, secondly, you get, get free training until you become a pro with the Royal Q bot. Finally, you get the RQTMI trading setup template. Now, this template caters to whatever capital range you have from $100 to a million dollars. There is a plan set out for you to help maximize your capital to help you make way more profit um, um, easily. Now, if you decide to go learn all this elsewhere, it could cost you from five to $6,000 just to gain that knowledge alone. But here in the team, once you become a part of the team, once you, once you purchase access to your bot, all this will be given to you for free. Yes, for free. Everything I've mentioned right now will be given to you for free. Uh, we have an amazing team. We have groups, so many groups 
<laughs> a lot of groups that are there to cater to your needs. We have amazing leaders you can always reach out to that can help hold your hands to um, guide you whatever it is that is confusing. Um, we have such amazing leaders you can always reach out to. All right, so that being said, thank you so much for taking our time to attend this presentation. I hope you really understood. Even if you didn't, please make sure you attend the next one. We have a, we have um, technical calls for those that want to know how or learn how to become day traders. We have calls on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Please do well to get back to the person who invited you to this call. Let them know that you are get, willing to get started. Please, if you listen to my voice, if you haven't gotten started, get started right away. This business works. As, simp as simple as that. Get started right now. Get back to the person who invited you. Let them know that you listened and you're ready to get started. So if you got any value from this meeting today, from the teachings, please type value in the chat and let me know how you feel. Thank you so much once again. My name is Ikenna George Elendo, and this is me signing out. Thank you once again. Um, Coach Moore, would you like to say a few words before we close? Coach Moore, are you there? <clears throat> All right, I think Coach Moore is probably busy right now. So um, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for taking our time. Um, thank you for, for okay. yeah, so I, I think he's busy. So please do well to um, get back to the person who invited you and get started now, trust me, this business is for every single person. Good night, everyone. I'll mute ourselves to say our goodbyes. Have an amazing evening. Bye, everyone. Good night, God. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Good night, sir. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.